You know, before we, uh, I was going to start dedicating Wednesday nights, of course, to singing and praying more, more dialed in on praying right now, uh, like a prayer meeting. Uh, you know, what are you, what, what do you, what do you, what do you pray for? Well, you know, there's all, there's, we got a, I've got about, I don't know, 20 or 30 prayers I found in the Bible outside of the Psalms uh, that we're going to be looking at. We're looking at one tonight, but, you know, we have different times, different ages. I think we're in the last age before the millennial age. That's when Jesus rules the whole earth. Uh, so I think things are a lot different today than they were, say, 2,000 years ago. But I think before we pray tonight, I want to dial in on some things. How, 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 do, you, how do you please God? Well, you know, there's really only one way, and that's, by, that's through faith, of course, in the Scripture, Word of God, but but what 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 do we do? What kind of attitude pleases God? I mean, get up in the morning with, with a certain kind of attitude, and you go to bed with a certain kind of attitude, right? You you, you sit down to a meal three or four a day probably with a certain kind of attitude. What's your attitude? Uh, so I like what the old preacher I used to know used to say: try to pray in God's will. You know. Well, all we know from God's will about God's will is what the Bible says. It don't say anything about the house that I live in, the Dodge Ram truck that I drive, you know, things like that. What kind of clothes to wear and, you know, things like that. You know, so we want to pray for things in God's will. But I found something that I think will help us tremendously today. I love to read things point blank right out of the Scripture that it's like a punch in the gut. It's so clear. You ever been punched in the gut or slapped in the face? And you're like, it's, it's that clear. I mean, somebody slaps you in the face, you're like, what? Wow. Well, I think I found something in the Scripture that I think will help us tremendously before we read our prayer. We're not going to have a long uh, reading or, or or lesson than that, but I but I want you to just read something with me in Second Thessalonians, no First Thessalonians, chapter five. Terry, Arthur, Joanne, Mary, Ethel, what is God's will? What is God's will? Guess what? That's a rhetorical question because we're about to read it. I mean, it is just so plain as the day. Look at verse, chapter 5, verse 18. Let's read it very slowly. I love this verse of Scripture. It is liberating to me. The great holy man, the Apostle Paul, writes to the a church in Thessalonica, Italy. He says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. <laughs> Can it get any more plain than that? In, what is the will of God? Y'all, what, what does God want us to do? Look here what Paul says. For in everything... Give thanks, point blank, what does he say? For this is the will of God. Can we be in God's will today? How can we do that? By giving thanks. And I think by being thankful. What's the opposite of thankful? Ungrateful. Hateful. 
thankful person is generally pretty happy and upbeat. An ungrateful person is what? Just the opposite. They're not very upbeat. They're joy kills. They're killer. They're, 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 they, they kill people's joy. So we need to be thankful. Back up. Verse 16. And by the way, you can look at the whole chapter one of these days. He says, Rejoice evermore. Hmm. How often? Evermore. Be a rejoicing person. A person who is full of rejoicing. Pray what? Without ceasingly. Without ceasing. That, that means unceasingly. That means to pray about everything. Lord, give me the strength to. Give me the faith to. Lord, uh, what should I do here? That's praying unceasing. That's praying about everything. Uh, it's hard to pray all you know, 24 7, anyone's anyway, talking about. That means about everything you do, you need to pray about it. That's what that means. Pray unceasingly. For what? For to know God's will. And then he goes on to verse 18. It says, In everything give thanks. See how it all works in there? See how it all works together? For this is the will of God. What is? Rejoicing every more, praying without ceasing, being thankful. That's all being in the will of God. Now, is that, that's not the American way, is it? What's the American way? <laughs> well, we don't want to get into that too much. We ought to be different. We ought to be a peculiar people, right? I just thought I would, I would point that out. It says, verse 19, quench not the Spirit. It kind of leads me to believe those three or four verses we just read. If you don't do that, think that way or ain't in that mind, attitude, you're quenching the Holy Spirit. That does not quench the Holy Spirit. If we're not that kind of people, we are just literally, we're literally walking, breathing people who quench the Holy Spirit or drowned out or, or pour water on uh, the Holy Spirit. So, based on that, we'll read our, before we, before we have a word of prayer, I want to go and I want to read you a prayer in the Bible by a man named, well, actually I don't know his name, uh, Abraham's servant. Abraham had a right hand man, remember a servant? It's in Genesis chapter 24. Go all the way back to Genesis chapter 24. You know, there, there's been different ages since, you know, God created the heavens and the earth. You know, in, in every age you find people that pray. Now here, we're in, what age are we in? You know, there's a book, if y'all want to read it, it's about that thick. It's big, big old thick book written by a man named L.D. Foreman. It's called The Bible in Eight Ages. I mean, it's a good book. Uh, it's a good book the way he lays them circles. You know, he draws a circle and then, a, you know, and he'll do eight circles, but they're all lapping. The circles will touch. You know, the, and we, we live in a world of different ages. We are 2,000 years far removed from Jesus, right? So that's a whole different age. I ain't standing here. But then you have Abraham's servant. He's going to pray a prayer that precedes Moses or the children of Israel going into the promised land by 500 years. So you have to do what? Put it in context. God deals with people on, in different ages in different ways. But I think we can still learn from the prayers you find in each of those ages, right? Uh, I've got quite a few Old Testament prayers I want to read. Not tonight, just one tonight. But, but you can get into the New Testament. Oh, my goodness. I'm talking about the letters of Paul and all the other. Not even, I'm, not, I'm talking about forget the Gospels, just through the letters and the epistles and things like that. Lots of prayers. But I want to start way back. Turn with me to Genesis 24, verse 12. And by the way, if you're interested, you want to fill in the gaps, go home and read chapter 24 of Genesis. I'm going to skip a lot. I just want to look at what this man said to God, because isn't that what praying is? Speaking 
to God from our mouth to his ears. Uh, verse 12, he says, he's talking about, this is just before Rebecca showed up. He got. He made this. He made the trip from way down there in the south all the way up to Haran, and he's sitting at a well. He's looking for a wife for you know who, Abraham's son Isaac. That was his mission. That was his goal. Abraham, the holy man, right? Abraham, the man whom God sat down face to face with, uh, and talked to, who God made a promise that. He was going to, through his seed, make a great nation. So based on what God said, do y'all get sick and tired of me saying that? Based on what God said, we ought to pray right. That's how, how, how do we pray correctly and accurately? It has to be based on what God said. Abraham sent a man to find Isaac a wife. Why? Because through Abraham's seed, God said, he's going to replenish and make a great nation, right? So based on all of that, Abraham, the wheels are turning in his brine. Remember, long time ago, the whole different era, whole different generations, people were different in Abraham's day. And then look what he says. Look what this man says in verse 12. And he said, Abraham's servant said, Oh, O oh Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of men, the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water, and let it come to pass that the damsel in whom I shall see let down thy pitch or in whom the damsel, which whom I shall say, maybe I ought to get those other glasses. Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink, and she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac, and thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. Seems like a odd prayer and you will hear people pray this way today they don't put things in context god if you'll do this i will do this based on what they read about something that happened thousands of years ago with abraham and his servants right now you know I, we talked a little bit about casting lots I believe god honored that at one time he don't anymore we can prove that, I think, from the disciples casted lots and named the 12th disciple after Judas died. Right? God did not honor that. Like, you know, people say they did, that he did. Well, the lot fell upon Matthias, I think it was his name. You know what ever happened to him? What, what did Matthias do? You know, they, they casted lots. Well, that's the guy God chose. Oh, really? Did he? Who did he chose? The Apostle Paul's name was Saul of Tarsus. One born out of due season. They didn't know about that. So God didn't honor that casting of lots. But you remember we talked about Jonah? Casted lots and the lot fell on Jonah. God honored that. So they knew that that was the reason why that storm came upon them. Because the lot fell on Jonah. So God honored that. Now, God, now, now this man, Lord, if give me a sign. I would, I, would, I would warn against that today about asking God for a sign. What do you need a sign for? Have you not read my Bible? If I was God, what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you need a sign for? Have you not read this? We got 66 books of the Bible and you need a sign? How about this? Stick to the, this don't worry about it. Stick to the Word of God. So he's sitting there by this well. He's got a task. I'm sure he knows the whole story. He's, he's Abraham's right-hand man. And he prays this prayer, Lord, help me. I don't, I don't know who to pick for Abraham. I don't know who, who you would want for Isaac's wife. And so he prays this kind of odd prayer, and let this be, let this be, let this be, and I'll know that's the one. Well, read the rest of it. 
But I want to go down to verse 42 when he is having a conversation with Rebecca's brother. Go down to 42. He's talking to Laban. He said, And I came this day into the well and said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, if now thou do prosper my way which I go, behold, I stand by the well of water. This is just a repeat of what he prayed. He's just telling Laban what I prayed, Laban. And it shall come to pass that when the virgin cometh forth to draw water, and I say unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water of thy pitcher to drink. And she say unto me, Both drink thou, and I will also draw for thy camels. Let the same be the woman whom the Lord hath appointed out of my master's son. And before I had done speaking, so y'all go back and read the whole story. You've probably read it before, but it's a good story to read again. Before I had done speaking in mine heart, huh? How about that? Where was he speaking? In mine heart. You remember, you remember uh, uh, Samuel's mama, oh, uh, Hannah? Lips moving but wasn't speaking. And, and what, did, what did Samuel say? Woman? Drunk. So, you know, people, they talk about the words we need to speak when we pray. This is how we need to approach God. How about this? God knows what you're thinking, whether your lips are moving or not, or whether you're saying it aloud or publicly or in private. Behold, Rebecca came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder, and she went down into the well and drew water. And I said unto her, Let me drink, I pray thee. Then y'all need to Paul Harvey the rest of that. You know what I mean? That's right. Go back and read the rest of the story. God honored that man's prayer. He was praying in God's will, and God honored his prayer. Now, that was a long time ago. What do we need to pray for today? There's a few things in the New Testament that we can find that we should ask for. One of them being wisdom. Another one being faith. Another one being forgiveness. You know you're asking for the right things when you ask for those three things. Uh, uh, so, here we are today, fixing to have a word of prayer. Uh, so, based on, I hope y'all enjoyed that little prayer. I got like 20 more to go, 20 more different people from the Old Testament. So, we'll take this opportunity now to open up time for prayer requests.